Hi, I'm Holly from the Goshen Farm and Gardens team, and we're in my kitchen today to teach you how to make raw cashew milk. All right, well, let's get started. So I got started yesterday with this recipe and you will need to do that it's not something you make the day of it's something you need to think about in advance but we've had a lot of our viewers who have asked if um, we could use a dairy alternative with um, our turmeric recipe with the golden milk so i'm like absolutely i was actually dairy free for over 10 years but my gut has been healed and now i can eat i can drink and eat um, dairy products without any difficulty at all but back in the day i couldn't even have a couple of teaspoons of milk so I lived off of this lovely nut right here. This is actually a raw cashews. And these are um, raw dates that are organic. These are organic also. You want raw when you're doing this. And I actually, in my restaurant, everything that appeared to be dairy was made with raw cashew milk. So I make um, a cheese sauce with raw cashews. If I had, um, a soup recipe that had cream in it, I would make a half and half with cashews and I would put that in. It was delicious. Um, the sky is the limit. Once you've learned how to do this, um, you could just keep rolling. You can make gravy with it. You can make soup with it. You can make milk for your cereal. You can make milk to put in hot tea to cream it up and make a latte or to cream up your coffee. Um, it's endless. And I'm going to tell you how to store it to make it convenient and easy. But this is how we make it. So this is how I learned how to make this probably maybe 12 years ago. And the way I learned how to sprout nuts um, and soak nuts first, you're going to soak them first. Um, you can actually sprout them also. That is not necessary to do this. But I'm going to show you how you could do that if you want to. So what I started with is this was a cup and a half of cashews. And then I put a little tiny piece of our raw seaweed in there. Now the reason I add seaweed, um, I was I taught that way by um, a lady named Brenda Cobb of Living Foods Institute. And she said that women who are at risk for cancer um, typically do not get enough iodine in their diet. So this is an easy way to slip in natural sources of iodine into your diet. It does not add any flavor because we are definitely going to remove that. But the nuts in the soaking process have absorbed all of the iodine from the seaweed, which is really nice, right? This is actually a sprouting jar. And I'm going to show you how to set this up. But first of all, I'm going to strain this off and I'm going to borrow the lid from this. So. These nuts have soaked um, overnight. I rinsed them this morning and put some fresh water in. Um, cashews are kind of on the sweet side, which makes them really great for milk. And we're pouring this liquid off to throw it away. And I could give this liquid to my chickens, to my dogs, because it's very rich in iodine, but we're not gonna use it. And it's already been rinsed several times. So these nuts are ready to be blended. So that liquid is going to be th probably given to my dogs. We'll see if they'll drink it. Put that over here. I'm going to get my Vitamix container. This is a really easy recipe, y'all. Just takes a little bit of planning ahead of time. Now we're going to want to be careful, and I did not bring a spoon over. Hold on one minute. Because we want to be sure to get the nuts in and not the seaweed. And it's okay if we get a little bit of it in, that's not a big deal. See, there's our seaweed. And that can get given to an animal. You could eat it if you want to, but it's gonna taste a little nutty. And I am honestly just pulling that out because it will change the color and slightly change the taste of your milk. So we want our milk to be nice and creamy and lovely, but we want it to be very nourishing. And this is a great, milk for children who do not tolerate dairy. It can be used in our formula recipe. And when I weaned my daughter, Rachel, she was allergic to everything. So um, when we found out about cashews, I switched her over to cashew milk and she flourished and thrived. Um, and you, if you're consuming cashews, 
You are never going to be low in magnesium. Alright, almost there. There's a few nuts there. I'm going to eat those. They taste so cashews are delicious. And you could actually use them in a stir fry to add protein if you're vegan. Alright, so there's all of our nuts. Now they were a cup and a half, but once they've rehydrated, they're probably closer to one and three quarters. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's the two two cup mark. And so they've really rehydrated and gotten quite big. So, but before we blend this up, I want to show you how to set up this jar for soaking your cashews to get them ready to make cashew milk. We're gonna get our cashews into, this is a soaking jar and a sprouting jar. So we're gonna use it for soaking right now. But as soon as you strain it off and you want something to sprout in here, all you're gonna do is put it up here and let it hang with the lid in and it'll allow all the liquid to drain down here which keeps them moist but keeps them from being soaking wet and that's what allows the sprouting process we'll, we'll get back with you on that one for some other recipes where but this is a great jar for soaking um, and draining so but we're going to soak it first all right so this should be about a cup and a half of nuts and I, I love mason jars for measuring. So that's a cup. So that's an eight ounce jar and I have them handy. So if you don't have them handy, it may not be convenient for you. So there's a cup. And I typically do a cup and a half. And this is one of those little teeny four ounce ones. So we're gonna fill that almost full. There we go. And before we get too far in, we're gonna go in and put our seaweed kind of tucked down the side or on the bottom, either way. And we're just gonna put a little piece in, nothing fancy, I mean, nothing major. And we're just gonna tuck that down the side. Kind of want it to anchor, there we go. And there's your cup and a half nuts. And now we're gonna cover this with clean filtered water which I have cleaned this in my Berkey, and you're just gonna go all the way to the top. And that's it. It's gonna soak for 12 hours, um, and then you can pull it right then, it's ready to go. Or you can soak it for another 12 hours, and you would, and if your house is really warm, 12 hours may be too long for cashews, because they can kinda go sour. So six hours is more than enough, um, I typically just do it at night before I go to bed and then after breakfast is when I will turn it over. And I would typically will only do the 12 hours. One thing we didn't do yet is we need to soak our dates. So they're just in a tiny little jar and they need some hot water. So this is not boiling hot water, but it's pretty hot. And it's clean, of course. All right, and that's just gonna soften those up so that when we blend them in our blender, um, it's just going to disappear. Now, um, this is a whole nut milk. So this is a filter cup that I use for teas, but it's really awesome. I've had this for probably 12 years. No, you cannot buy them. I had two and I now only have one and nobody's allowed to use this but me because I absolutely love it. But you can get these type of like little just mesh you want really fine mesh and it's basically something that you would use like when you're making loose tea and you put this in your cup to capture the tea and pull it out. That's what this was for, but it's great for capturing if you miss a nut or two. And I use a Vitamix. This could work in other blenders, but Vitamix does it fantastic. So our dates are pretty soft. So we're gonna just check them out. Oh yeah, they're definitely ready. And it depends upon how sweet you want it, if you wanna put two in. I usually do two because my family likes sweet. We're just gonna do one this time. We're gonna put that in. Then we're going to put a little bit of cool water, about a half a cup or so. And then we're gonna finish it with hot water. Now, the quantities will be down below in the recipe. Um, I'm gonna make this as though it's for half and half for coffee. And then you can reconstitute it and add more water to make it like whole milk, if that, if that makes sense. And of course you can add more water if you want to make it like the consistency of rice milk or almond milk or 1% milk. I don't like any of those milks because I like milk to taste like milk. This tastes like milk. All right, so we're going to add, hold on, we'll measure it. Measuring is a great thing. I eyeball everything. So we're going to add 
probably about another two, about three fourths of a cup of water, but it's hot because that's going to help this blend. And then we're going to put our lid on, and this is a lid on option uh, item. You definitely do never want to blend this without a lid because it's going to get cranking. And you want to get this on high. Now, it's going to be almost paste-like, pretty, not a real thick paste, but um, it, will, it will be thick. And we're going to add more liquid to dilute it to whatever consistency that we want. So we're going to put this on the blender, and it is going to get loud. And I don't see hardly any specks. So the little bit of specks in here are dates. Um, and we could probably blend that just a tiny bit more, but just for the sake of video time, we're gonna probably move forward and go ahead and pull this off. Now let's take a look at the consistency first, and we're gonna think about what we're doing with this. So what I'm planning to do is I wanna make a small jar of half and half for um, a beverage that I wanna make that's dairy free. And then I'm going to add a few little seasonings to this, and I'm going to make a glass of what I would consider a vegan um, nutmeg, uh, not nutmeg, <laughs> eggnog, which is very much has nutmeg in it. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. So let's take a look. So this is pretty thick right here. This is cheese sauce consistency right there. So you wouldn't do very much to that except add whatever flavors you want to make it taste like a cheese sauce. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little more than half full. And then I'm gonna to top that off with some more hot water. It doesn't have to be hot, hot. It just, it could be even room temperature water, but hot water is gonna make it blend so you can see if you've got the right consistency. Now that's gonna be a really nice, almost to the heavy whipping cream level, half and half level. That's delish right now. I mean, I'm serious, that is delish. Now the reason I wanted to highlight this is because if you have a blender that's not like this, like um, the Ninja one, I'm trying to think, there's some different names, but you can run your nut milk through this to make sure that you didn't leave any little pieces. But this is a whole nut milk, which is what makes it so nourishing and there's no waste, which I love no waste. I have a no waste kitchen, so this makes me super happy. So this little container is awesome for also freezing off your, your milk so that you always have half and half ready. And then if you wanna take this half and half and make it a little bit thinner for like cereal, then you would just add a little bit more water. But this little setup right here is awesome. So it's already set up. So you can put it in your freezer like this and then that'll be ready to go. And then as soon as you're ready to use it for half and half, you would fully defrost it. Mix it well, of course. And then here you go. You got a little serving cup to do your half and half or half and half for your vegan friends or your friends that are dairy free. I have a lot of friends that are dairy free. So they're gonna appreciate this little tip. Okay, so we're gonna make an eggnog. We're making a vegan eggnog. We're making a whole nut raw eggnog. It's lovely. Okay, so what I have in here is a little over, probably about two thirds of a cup of my half and half. So it's pretty thick, more like almost a heavy whipping cream level. Um, I've got some seasonings here that I'm gonna add. This one to me does the best job making it taste like eggnog because it has a lot of cloves and nutmeg in it. Um, I do also use this one, but it has a lot more cinnamon and a little bit less of the other two. So it doesn't taste as eggnoggy to me. For sweetness, you can either add stevia, organic, from wherever you get it from. You can add um, another date which is what I'm gonna do. So this one will not have stevia in it because I have friends who do not like stevia. I do, but I want them to try this. So I'm gonna put the one date in, might break it apart a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna put in my Trader Joe's that is not organic, about five shakes, maybe six. And we're gonna put one little splash on top. Now, obviously nutmeg is not warm, but um, we can chill this down with like a couple of ice cubes to cool it down because we've done all of this now. So we're bringing this all together now, um, but we can chill it in the fridge as soon as we're done. Um, but we're gonna add some warm water again because this has just been made. And you could do cool water with it, but it's, it just likes to blend better with warm. 
and not hot because we're not cooking this. All right, so it is now the consistency of whole milk. Um, it's got a date for sweetness. If that's not enough sweetness for you, add another date to keep it completely raw, completely natural. Obviously, this is a very processed product. My kids love stevia, they love sweet, so it's just what we do. All right, put the lid on, and we're gonna blend it till we see, we don't see any more of the dates bopping around in there. Now, this has actually got a little bit of foam action, and if you don't want foam, then all you do is let it settle down. It is steaming a little because we put warm water in there. So let's pull this all together. Let's have some vegan eggnog for our dairy-free friends of Goshen. All right, we gotta have enough for two people. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Almost had it perfect. Ta-da! <laughs> Vegan eggnog. Homemade, nourishing, delicious. Thank you for coming into my kitchen. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this recipe. Give us some comments below. Let us know what you'd like to hear about, what you'd like to see at the beginning of the year. We'd love to hear from you. Please hit the share button. We'd like to get the word out about um, Goshen Farm and Gardens and our health series and our vlogs. Um, and definitely hit the sub button so you get notified when we have these awesome videos getting released. Thank you for coming to my kitchen. God bless you.